I have to be honest, like it's two years later and I'm still kind of in my shell, like afraid of people because I saw so much of like the worst of humanity right in my face. It's really hard to trust people right now. And I think I'm still redefining who I am, figuring out if this hatred is gonna follow me no matter what I do. How do I do it while still maintaining my sanity? And what is the best possible impact I can make or at least the most fun I can have? My name is Gloa Tammo. I'm a writer, speaker, and educator, and I am a creator. Welcome to my home, oh my gosh. I'm so excited. First thing that you're gonna see when you enter is what I call my wall of fame. I needed something as a staple to remind myself of what I've done and where I've been. And 95% of these were taken on a tripod. I think that's what makes it most special is that these were moments that I just shared with myself. Like no one was there to capture it except me. So it's just really cool to walk through this hallway and just remember like, oh my gosh, I was there, I did that. And I was even emotional the first couple times <laughs> I put it up because I was like, ah, this was my life. But now I have a home. This jar <laughs> has currency from over 70 countries, even like debit cards, international debit cards that no longer work. And it probably equals like 500 US dollars total. But um, yeah, if, if there's ever a day where I'm really desperate and I have to exchange it, that'll be a sad day. <laughs> so I hope that I can hold on to this for as long as possible. And yeah, it's just a reminder of just the beauty and diversity and all the places that I've been. So it's 2019, full-time travel blogger, living the dream, <laughs> living out of a suitcase for seven years at this point, over 85 countries, and life is going pretty good. But then 2020 happens. I don't even know who I am anymore. And I started to feel all these parts of me that were taking the back seat while I was building this travel blogging career. And I think there's so many layers to us as creators that we pocket them because we think that we're only meant to be this one dimensional person. So I was like, you know what, 2020, I'm gonna reinvent myself. I am just gonna do and say and be whoever I want to be online. And so I'm actually creating like Nigerian comedy sketches one day. I'm posting like really thoughtful, emotionally evoking memes the next and just going through the motions. And then May comes and Ahmaud Arbery happens and then George Floyd happens. People are now awakened to the injustices that were happening in the black community. And I said I could stay offline and just process because I'm also going through it and I'm emotional. Or I can use my voice and show up in a different way. And it didn't even feel like my choice. <laughs> like when something is such a conviction or you, you feel that personal responsibility, you just answer the call. For almost eight months, every single day, I am posting a carousel, an educational post, something that educates people on what the black experience is like. Some of the day-to-day -day microaggressions that I overcome both nationally and internationally when I travel. Hollywood celebrities and athletes and entertainers were reposting my content and their stories. So within a few days, I gained over 200,000 followers on Instagram. And my a single carousel was getting over 4 million views. And that level of exposure and attention is terrifying. Like you don't ever prepare for it. You don't actually even plan for it. I was like, I'm posting because I wanna actually educate on this and I think it's important. I start to realize how big of a responsibility it is. And one thing that I decided to do because I was getting so many DMs and questions, I said, okay, well, why don't I create this 30 day ally resource guide? And it was kind of like 30 foundational areas that anyone who was interested in being a better ally or just being a better neighbor, friend, coworker, boss, they can use this. I am just shook because I didn't do it for the money. And I'm so overwhelmed and I'm getting all of these speaking opportunities. I keep turning them down. They're paying tens of thousands of dollars. Come speak to our corporate office, C-suite execs. Like we need you, we want you. And 
I, the very first one I took, that's when I was like, I'm not taking any more of these <laughs> because I realized going on Zoom and talking to these, I'll be very honest, old white men <laughs> about what it's like to be black <laughs> was not the most enjoyable thing. I don't care how much you're paying me. <laughs> and I was like, this kind of sucks because they're not interested. Uh, this one is falling asleep. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to do this ever again. I get through that presentation and I'm just like, ugh, I feel so gross. Um, I remember I broke down in tears because again, you're teaching something emotionally traumatic. It is exhausting and it is emotionally draining. And I'm having to like go through it and watch people be uninterested. I was like, man, this is, what's the point? <laughs> And you get to this place of like hopelessness and it was just really hard. And so I quit everything so that I can just figure out what am I supposed to be doing? Who am I supposed to be helping? When you don't feel like, you know, people are, are grateful for the work that you're doing. It's really hard. And I was getting so much there was like death threats and I had to get the FBI involved. And there was just so much, so much anger and hostility towards me. And so you start to lose hope in humanity because you're seeing the worst of humanity like in your face every single day. And I had to use, I had to use Instagram's like filter, word filter, where certain words you can block so that the messages don't even hit your inbox. So the N word, like monkey, um, wench, idiot, stupid. I'm just like literally having to type those words in to get them blocked just so that those messages wouldn't hit my DMs. And at the same time, I'm also getting DMs from like people that like I actually wanted to connect with. So I'm like, okay, I can't not check my DMs forever. So I, I need a filter so that I can figure out a way to like make this work. And I wish there was more education around social media etiquette because right now there's so much access like you can take two seconds to send something really harmful and hateful to a stranger on the internet. And there's so much of that that exists that there's not enough boundaries that protects people. And I'm, I've always been very sensitive. So it was really harmful and it was different from the type of comments when I was a travel blogger. The worst type of hatred I got as a travel blogger was like, oh, that's daddy's credit card. I was like, my dad died before my first international trip, but thank you. So it's like, that one was like, I can separate myself because I'm like, that's so stupid. But to not leave your apartment for four months, because you get an email saying that someone was paid $30,000 to blow your head off, like that fucks you up. And I'm like, I don't know what exists. I don't know who's out there. I don't know who's watching me. So I'm just, I'm gonna stay in my shell and people, I don't know who you are. Like, I'm just, it was so scary. So we are now getting to the end of 2020. I am fully burnt out. I am emotionally spent. I am exhausted. I don't know who I am, but this is who the world is telling me to be. And so I'm like playing this role, thinking that's who I should be in kind of like hating myself in the process because I feel like I have to be sad all the time. And I was like, wait, I don't wanna be known for this. <laughs> it's just, it's like the internet only accepted me when I was sad and emotional. I'm a joyful person and I don't wanna only be this. So I go to my blog post and I, I write this very melodramatic title. The end, dot, 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 or the beginning, <laughs> dot, 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 question mark. <laughs> And I'm literally like, I canceled everything. My retreats, my courses, my academy, my summit, my mastermind. I have just been burnt out trying to provide for everyone but myself. I need to just reset. So I sat for about three to four months not doing anything. And I think there's something special and terrifying about that. Because as creators, we're supposed to be creating, we're supposed to be posting, we're supposed to be sharing the journey. But I had shared and documented for 20, 20 years of my life. And so I was like, I deserve this break. I'm allowed to take this break. And I don't know how long it's gonna take me to figure out what's next. I started playing the piano again. I took up salsa classes. I think as a creator, you live so many years in survival mode that you forget to enjoy the journey and what you've built. So I started to take myself like less seriously and I stopped looking for answers. I was like, it's okay if I only have questions right now. The answers, if they come, will present themselves as I just live life. But I'm okay just existing as a human because before I commercialize who I am, I'm a person who's worthy just as a human, point blank. 
What brought me back to social media, it's almost like you'll implode <laughs> if you don't share. Like as a creator, like your burning and living desire is to share your art with the world. And that art is words, photos, videos. So I would always have something that was so strong or convicting in my heart. I'm like, I have to share this. As you're building a personal brand, you start to put on a little bit of a facade. You're not lying, but you don't let people fool you in. You're like, oh, I'll tell you about traveling solo in this country, but I won't tell you about, you know, the panic attack on the flight there. So I just started getting like, just more honest about everything. And that's so freeing. I just got to a point where I was tired of shrinking to appease someone else and tired of pretending or performing to like audition for people's acceptance. I was like, you're either gonna like me or you're not, but pretending to like be a certain way so that I can hope that you like me, like I'd rather you hate me for who I really am than love me for who I'm really not. So I come on social media very grounded now. So when I do get attacked, I've already got the armor. I'm like, oh, no, I, I prepared for this. No, I, I'm grounded. I'm secure in who I am. I know what I'm doing. Your projections have nothing to do with me. So um, I'll take it, but like, I'm not gonna respond or I'm not gonna receive it. I dream business ideas. <laughs> so there's always a business idea in the back of my head, but there's never always a desire to launch. There's like these core values that I've really embedded over the years. And I don't want this like quick money grab. So I'm so much slower in this next season. And I don't care if I like don't make a million dollars every year. I even had a friend, like she's a mentee, super young, in her, in her early 20s, multimillionaire. She's like, well, I'm ready to quit it all. I'm like, I get it. Because once you've made the money, you're like, oh, let me go redo all the other parts. <laughs> because you're in such like grind mode for so long that you forget about all the other areas that you want more balance. So for me, integrity is everything. If I can't have integrity stitched into the fabric of everything that I'm building, I don't want it. And that's why as the future of the creator economy is built, I'm still gonna be like, mm, nope, I opt out. Nope, nope, I'm gonna choose what makes sense for me. This is my creative studio. It is probably the room that gets the messiest on any given day because this is where I come to create and this is where I don't give myself any rules. I think when you're a creator, you have to allow yourself to not be so organized. I have this life in weeks thing, which kind of documents how many weeks left I have of life, <laughs> which is humbling and important to keep in perspective. This is my writing computer because I have no apps, no software. I don't even know if the Wi-Fi is connected. <laughs> and I am currently writing my book. It is the hardest thing I've ever done, probably will ever do, um, but it's so rewarding. Every year I also try to create an idea of what I want my business model to look like. Even if I don't exactly follow it as I've mapped it out, it's nice to get all of my ideas out there. So if you keep everything up here, it'll never get launched. So it's good to look at it every day and be reminded of like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm working towards. What keeps me going on the creator journey, especially when I'm like ready to quit it all, is like, you have to constantly look at what you've done. You have all of this because you took a chance on yourself. You put yourself out there into the world and you just did it before you were ready, before you were confident even though you're going to constantly be on a pursuit for more or different or this evolution of better you're still like worthy and you're still experiencing someone else's dream and you have to never forget that being a creator today after 20 years of doing this it's wild to see how much the industry has evolved and then it's exciting to see where it's going to go because I think the creator economy is now being thrown around as like billion dollar industry, multi-billion dollar industry. And I wanna give more creators like permission to like reinvent the direction. I think a lot of times when there is no sure path, cause you don't go to college to be a creator. Like there's no like creator degree. <laughs> when you don't know what the blueprint is, you have permission to create it. And so there are times in my career where I'm like, all right, tell me what to do next. And I'm like, oh, I meant to create the blueprint for people like me. 
and I could never find the person doing exactly what I wanted. So I always had to be like, okay, well, I have no example, so I guess you have permission to do whatever. So that's kind of exciting and scary <laughs> because it's like, you never know if the next decision or step you make is the right one because you can't compare it to anyone else's. While there are other creators at my level and above, I can still look at their journey and be like, mm, that's not quite what I'm doing or what I want, so I'm not gonna take that step or I'm not gonna go that direction. And while it could work for them, I always question like, does that make sense for me? And I'm okay with sticking with what's worked and taking longer to decide on what's next. The biggest difference between my business model in 2019 versus now in 2022, there's a lot more sustainability with what I have now. And I heard this quote from Myron Golden. He said, sometimes you have to cut off an income to build another stream. And I had 20 different income streams at my highest. And obviously you can imagine what my day is like. Woke up with anxiety because I'm like, oh, who do I have to fulfill today? Like, who do I need to answer to? Because even though I was an entrepreneur, I was still answering to all these different people who were paying me money essentially. And so I woke up with this like lingering anxiety that I was like behind on something. I'm on this current journey, everything else is a distraction. So if it doesn't add to the journey I'm on, like I don't have time for it. But wildly enough, I'm still on pace to do seven figures this year. So it's like, no matter how you find a way to build your life or build your income streams, whatever has worked in the past, like you don't have to keep using that as the only way to make it in the future. Everyone has said it before, like you cannot rely on social media alone to maintain your audience. And if you don't have some form of contact, their number or their email address, um, they're eventually gonna forget about you or you're gonna lose contact with them. So building that email list took me a few years to really like get comfortable even finding the value in an email. I was like, no one reads email anymore. It's gonna go to spam. So I was pretty skeptical. But once I realized that like people don't pull their credit cards out on, on social media, it's like it's email that you're making investments. And I was like every course that I've sold, every product that I've sold, social media might have helped, but it was like through email that they were like convicted to make the decision. I always had my email opt in at the bottom of every blog post. And then like in my YouTube captions, I always say like, you know, if you want to be a part of my free community, you know, opt into my newsletter. And what I use my newsletter for, or my email list for, is like more personal stories. And I always want my email list to feel like they're getting exclusive access to me in a way that social media isn't. No one wants to be sold to. Everyone loves a sale, but no one wants to be sold to. So you cannot position everything as like a money grab. <laughs> so I always start with like, man, here are three quotes that just really made my week better. And I'll share three quotes, maybe some small stories. And it's like, by the way, you know, it, it'll always be in the PS. There you can put like a little casual link, like never make it the main focus. And I say never, but that's just my strategy. My marketing is anti-marketing. Like I want people to come to me and be like, no, 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 wh where do I buy? <laughs> Not like buy this. It's like, no, go, where do I buy? I, I need it and I want it. And I feel like in that way, it's a full body yes. I never want to guilt or shame, use scarcity tactics, scarcity marketing, three left and you know, final chance. Like, no, like here's the facts, <laughs> here's the truth. <laughs> and if you'd like more information, you can click this button. If not, here's a book that might help you anyway. I love doing that. If I'm selling something, I always say, and if this course isn't for you, here's a book that changed my life, like go check it out. I'm not driven by money. I think it's important to say that because in your starting season, when you don't have money, then yes, money is like a driving factor. It's like, I don't want to be poor anymore. I don't want to be poor. I don't want to be poor. The days where I was a travel blogger and I didn't have money to book a hostel, even if the hostel was like $7, I would like find a park bench and I would just sleep on the bench. I literally found a way to make it work because I know what I'm building I can't yet see, but I know it's gonna be a great life. Like I know I'm headed towards something that is so beautiful, so indescribable that I'm willing to overcome and get through this. And then you get the money, you're like, okay, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Now what? Now I just wanna be happy. Now I want balance. Now I want harmony. Now I want fulfillment. Now I want the deepest level of impact. And you're chasing things that are not tangible. 
which makes it harder to find. <laughs> it's like, how do you know that peace is in your hand? <laughs> you can't, is that you, peace? You just, you can't look at peace and be like, aha, there you are. <laughs> so it's so much harder to know that you have it if you can't see it. So what I'm hungry for now is like, I'm so driven by death and not in the morbid way. It's like at any given moment, this could be our last chance to put out the art, to publish the book, to share our story, to help someone else. And it's in our truth, in our authentic way of living and serving that we make this world a better place and we serve the people that need us most. I have my days, I have my moments where I'm ready to quit, but I think about the person that I wish I could have had or the book that I read where an author frees me. I'm like, oh, I'm meant to do this for someone else.